Hello and welcome to my channel, I'm TFR Wilderness and uh, this is my TF18 of 2018 video. This is the video where I show you my favourite bots that I've bought throughout the year. Now, you may or may not notice that I, I sound a little different in this video to, to ones I've done previously and the reason being is that I've now got... I've now got a microphone. Yeah, um, ever since I got this this 1080p um, high definition webcam with stereo microphones I noticed that the audio quality wasn't quite as good as the old 720p webcam I used to have and uh, to me the, the audio sounded a little, little muffled and distorted um, I don't know whether any of you guys noticed it but but I certainly did and uh, I wanted to get a microphone to improve the audio quality of my video and I, I put a I saw that um, Engineer Hoist had done a review on this particular brand of uh, microphone from uh, Fine Fine, well Fine Fine, and uh, it looked pretty good and it was reasonably priced and uh, I put it on my Christmas box list and one of my relatives got it for me for Christmas so that was great. Now, um, as I've been doing this uh, first and worst thing with my uh, end of month bot hauls, that meant that I would have, at the end of the year, I'd have at least 12 top bots to show you at the end of the year and I thought well only means I've got to select six extra bots from the other bots that I bought throughout the year to make up the 18 and that's essentially what I've done however there is a slight problem uh, now I really wanted to record the you know this video as a, a one-shot recording on uh, Saturday the 29th of December unfortunately yesterday on Friday the 28th I got a notification from Kapow that they were going to dispatch a uh, third party uh, pre-order that I placed back in October and there's a chance that that might arrive in the next couple of days or, or before December 31st or it might arrive on Monday and it has the potential to be a you know a, an amazing bot a top bot of the year and I can't really do my end of month bot haul or my you know top bots of the year until that things come in. So what I've decided to do instead is with this video, um, knowing that I like to, to chat a lot when I show the video, uh, show the bots to you, I like to you know, talk unnecessarily about them. Um, and I've got 18, effectively 18, well actually over 20 bots to show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split this video up into individual clips of the, the bots that I, I'm going to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the my, the, the first t the 12 first bots I got from January through to December and then I'll show you the extra six and then I'll finish off with the uh, honourable mentions. Now this video has the potential to become uh, another one of these uh, record breaking videos on my channel going over an hour so you know be warned this is going to be quite long but I'm going to try and keep the the, the chit chats for the individual bots down to two to three minutes and hopefully, you know, we'll get this all buttoned up in under an hour. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So yeah, bringing to you the first, first bot that I got back in January. It's this one. Um, this is the Takara Toys R Us exclusive Age of Extinction Rusty Mode Evasion Optimus Prime figure. Um, now this figure came out in 2014 and I can remember um, that scene where Cade takes that, uh, that that rusty old truck into his farm and in, gets in the barn and then he jump starts it and lo and behold it's Optimus Prime, it transforms into a robot and then the cemetery wing, wind guys come in and you get the, 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 the chase scene away from the farm. Now this is Optimus, this is to represent Optimus's you know, really beaten up and you know really rusty paint paint warm you know all that uh, aging, aging the patina all over it and, and I really love that look of it but this guy came out on a pre-order in Kapow back in 2014. I passed on it. I didn't buy it initially. And then, unfortunately, because it was a limited edition figure, I missed out on it. And then when I did want to buy it, it was at ridiculous scalpers prices. But um, back in January, uh, I managed to see somebody selling this guy for a reasonable price. And I jumped at it and I managed to get it for around about just over 20 quid. And I couldn't be happier. I mean... I did get the uh, the breakout battle version of this from the the box set, which uh, was was on my TF14 list. So I have got another version of this mold, which has also been on one of my top bots of the year lists. But uh, this is the version that I really wanted, and I finally got him in January. And for me, he was my prized possession of all the bots I got in January. So he was the first bot 
for January is my 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 top purchase in January, and uh, so it's a uh, Takara Toys R Us exclusive Age of Extinction Rusty Mode Optimus Prime. Right, my next purchase, well, my next first bot, you know, top bot that I got back in February, is this fella. Fans Project FT08G Grinder or G2 Coloured um, Grimlock. Um, now, I like Grimlock. Grimlock's one of my favourite characters. I've got a you know, whole bunch of them in here. And. I didn't want to go down the route of getting all the, um, you know, the, the third party Grimlocks uh, because it was a really expensive game, especially when you get to, you know, fellas like this. Um, but because this guy, they did it, you know, uh, Fans Toys did a, a bunch of repaints, including this, this G2 one, I kind of thought, well, you know, I'd like to get hold of that. But fortunately, me again, I missed the boat when this guy was readily available on the pre order. And um, since. The pre-order sold out, he's shot up in price, and you'll be lucky to get hold of one of these for under 200 quid. But I did get lucky, and for fortunately, um, I, I managed to find one on eBay when I was actually, strangely enough, I was searching for G2 Grimlock, and I, and I found this. And there was a seller in, I think it was China, who was doing it for just over 150 well, just under 155 quid shipped. And it also came with the, the head upgrade, because... The dinosaur head on this, um, it's not very G1 accurate, it looks more like Barney the dinosaur, but they did a, a, a more G1 looking head upgrade and I've got that as well even though I haven't actually put it on it. And uh, yeah, so I got him and I got it for just under 155 quid, so he's one of the you know, the mo most expensive bots that I've bought this year. He's big, he's heavy, it, it's, it's fans toys, you know, it's, it's fans toys quality, but he's only the second fans toys product that I've got. I've got... Um, fans toys um, lupus as well and this is only my second fans toy figure but I got this guy in February and he was my top purchase of February uh, fans toys FT06 G G2 grinder he's a uh, really really good then we get on to March and uh, in March, I got a, a, a Kapow pre-order, which I, I, I think I placed it in December or January, one of the two. And it was for this this fella. Takara Movie Best 20 Nemesis Prime. And this is, well, it's, it's from their Movie Best line. And this is the Nemesis Prime repaint of the, um, the Leader Class Calibre Mold which Takara did for you know, uh, the last night. And the reason I went for this was twofold. One, it's it's a representative of Nemesis Prime because I don't really care much for Optimus, um, but I'd rather have... But I do like the Optimus Prime moulds, don't get me wrong. I mean, I think Optimus Prime gets some really cool and interesting moulds, though I don't care much for the original character. But if they get repainted into Nemesis or Ultra Magnus colours, then I, I'd rather go for that instead. Now, this is... Um, you know, it, it, it represents Nemesis Prime from uh, the Last Night movie, where he went back to Cybertron and he got bewitched by um, Quintessa and uh, turned evil. And this toy, I mean, the paintwork on it is incredible. Uh, the engineering on it is amazing because being a caliber mold, the, the, the tail arse of the trailer folds up to become a shield, and then you get a much, much cleaner bot as a result. He's also got, you know, uh, remolding on the forearms. Um, he's, he's loaded with ratchets, really fun transformation and amazing paint. I was totally blown away by it. Really totally blown away by it. And I never thought I'd say that about uh, an Optimus Prime figure. And I, I really didn't have uh, a version of the Optimus Prime in his, you know, his, um, you know, Cyber Knight version from uh, Age of Extinction or uh, The Last Night. So that's the reason why I went for it. Absolutely amazing figure, and I, I would have to say this is it had such wow factor when I first messed around with this. It's in incredible. I love this thing, and I would say out of all the bots I'm showing you on this, this this is probably the best bot I bought this year. So this is it, um, movie best twenty. Uh, Nemesis Prime, uh, my first or best bot that I bought back in March. Now on to April, and in April, um, obviously the stu Studio Series figures started coming out, and, and I uh, 
I, I bought a couple of them, including this guy. Studio Series 07 Leader Class Grimlock. And again, I'm a fan of Grimlock and this just more or less nails the you know the look of Grimlock from the Age of Extinction movie. Um, I haven't or I didn't have the uh, the leader class figure from Age of Extinction at this point. Spoilers for later on. Um, yeah, so this was the was going to be my leader Grim Grimlock from the movie, and it, it's an amazing sculpt. It's absolutely incredible. It's it's got all this awesome, you know like a metallic blue paint wash all over it unfortunately they didn't put the wash over every everything i mean there's some bits that have clearly haven't been painted and it's a shame that he didn't do that um some of the articulations a little bit restricted uh there are some third party sort of um add-ons you can add to this to improve it but that said i mean i was no again really really like this figure it, it it's amazing and it looks fantastic in, in both modes and uh, again, it was my uh, favourite purchase from uh, from uh, April. So that's uh, Studio Series Leader Class Grimlock. Now on to May, and in May, um, I uh, got the uh, the final uh, box set for the uh, Unique Toys Palm Collection series, which is where they were doing Legend Scale versions of the uh, the G1 Headmasters and. I, I bought in from this line from the get go, and I picked up every single every single box set that they did. They did five box sets in total with uh, two figures in each, and we got the the final editions. We got YM04 and YM05, which uh, came out in May, and we've got Knight. Now this is Snapdragon, effectively. This is their uh, rendition of Snapdragon. Um, I love these little things. Um, they're you know little Legion class headmasters. Obviously, this is a triple changer. They did um, they did Ape Face as well, but he came in the other box set. Um, engineering on this thing is absolutely amazing. It, it's so easy to transform from jet to dragon mode. It's it's just it's super fun. A little bit more involved to go into the um, the robot mode, but I mean that the plastic quality, the the engineering, the design, the articulation on these things is is absolutely amazing for something so small. Um, the only drawback of them is that they're not the most detailed figures in terms of you know uh, molded detail. You know, not like um, for instance, you know, Iron Factory figures. But then again, they're supposed they're aping the the G1 figures, and G1 figures didn't have an awful lot of um, molded detail on them, so they're, they're fairly accurate in that respect. But I was absolutely amazed by this figure. He's an awesome little dragon, and you can uh, put the put his uh, guns and wings together to form uh, some dragon wings on his back, and that's that's really fantastic. So yeah, love this thing. Absolutely fantastic figure. So that was my uh, my first bot or top bot for uh, for May. Um, Unique Toys Palm Collection YM zero five B Knight. Right now on to June. Now, this year I've been working to a, a reduced budget to what I've usually worked to. I restricted myself to £400 a month. And for the most part, I came in under budget. There were a few months where I went slightly over. But um, as a result of this, it meant that if I wanted to buy a big expensive bot over £100, it, it really sort of restricted what I could buy throughout the rest of the month. And uh, so it wasn't very often that I did that. I mean, obviously I did it with, uh, with Grindr, but... Um, <clears throat> In June, um, there was a, a big masterpiece figure that I wanted to get, and uh, I uh, took the plunge and went for him. Masterpiece Ultra Magnus. Yes, now Ultra Magnus is one of my all-time favourite characters. Next, next to you know G1 Megatron, um, uh, Grimlock, Silverbolt, and Scorn from you know you know Beast Wars and Age of Extinction, and. Uh, so I, I I didn't have the masterpiece in my collection, so I had to get one. Um, they reissued. This is the, the the reissue one that came out earlier this year, and uh, I, I got it from Kapow, uh, one hundred and twenty seven ninety nine, and so it was a big deal getting it. You know, a lot of money to get this bot, but you know he is amazing. He is fantastic. You know, he's it's Ultra Magnus. It's the big, bulky, you know, guy from the G one movie that we all know and love, 
and uh, I, I felt I had to step in and get one. Though, later on in the year, uh, opportunities came up where I could have got these, this guy slightly cheaper than what I paid for him at, um, from Kapow back in, uh, back in June. So, you know, I could have got it slightly cheaper further down the line, but um, I, I decided to stump up the cash and go for him back in May, and I'm so glad that I did. So, yeah, Masterpiece 22 Ultra Magnus, enough said. Now on to July, and um, a uh, little third-party figure, well, we say third-party because it's come from a company called uh, Mech Planet, who uh, made some early releases which you, know, you could argue were, were sort of borderline KO third-party figures. And like, like they bought out the, that little sound wave, and then they did um, started doing legend-scale renditions of uh, Ratchet and Ironhide and a few other characters. And their lines look really good. But then they announced this character. And it is this guy. This is a Mech Planet HS14 Commander Centurion. Now, um, it's basically Hearts of Steel Bumblebee from the IDW comic. Now, if you've not read Hearts of Steel, I suggest you go and read it because it's, it's basically... Um, Transformers steampunk set in the uh, the Industrial Revolution of the American Midwest, and it's 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 absolutely fantastic, you know, comic to read, and um, obviously all the Transformers take on these you know forms of uh, vehicles from the Industrial Age, like you know, we, uh, Mastermind Creations did a few um, figures for it, including that uh, amazing shockwave that turns into that uh, you know that Confederate gunboat, and the Optimus Prime that turned into like a steam train. Um, that line sort of died a death because it was, was of uh, limited interest. But, um, you know, Mech Planet, you know, Hot Soldiers came out with this guy. And it's basically Hearts of Steel Bumblebee from the, the What's It. It's a brilliant little figure. The moulding, the sculpting, the engineering, fantastic. Um, it turns into a little, you know, little Cybertronian steam train. And, and you don't get nearly enough train forms as far as I'm concerned. Um, the only thing about it... Um, is is the name now now this guy is called iron hero and not commander centurion the reason being is that yes this character appeared in the hearts of steel comic but later on uh, th this mold this design of bumblebee or centurion as it became to be known resurfaced in later idw comics in the revolutionary series and uh, he appeared in that and he, he got merged with a, the soul of a human and then became this this sort of human cybertronian hybrid called Centurion. He had a different head sculpt, but it was basically the same mould, and they named their character the same as the, the character from the comic book, and I noticed that in more recent times, this thing's been re now renamed to Iron Hero, but on the original, I've got the original packaging that says, you know, Commander Centurion, but it's a brilliant little figure. I uh, really love it. It's fantastic, and it was my uh, top purchase of um, July. Then on to August, and August is obviously, you know, TF Nation. And uh, I was approaching uh, Bot 900. I mean, I, I keep a, a very, you know, detailed numbering system on my collection. And uh, when I reach, um, like, what I refer to as a centenary bot, that bot takes on extra significance because then I, I withhold their reviews for when I reach that number of subscribers on my channel. It's kind of an unusual arrangement, but... Um, Anyway, I knew I was going to hit bot 900 at TF Nation, but uh, I just I just let it go. And on the Saturday morning, I was I was buying bots. And when I got back to the room and checked up my numbers, this guy turned out to be my ninth centenary bot. So this is a masterpiece Sunstreaker that I picked up from the Kapow store for 80 quid. Yeah, I, I wanted to get hold of this thing. Um, yes, Takara masterpiece figures, you know, they're pushing the price up because they can, <laughs> because they're they're the official license holders. They put, you know, they think they by putting a little bit extra engineering into a figure and a fancy repaint, they think they can charge what they like, as has been seen with the the prices of that uh, that uh, version free um, Optimus Prime and that uh, Beast Wars Megatron that's coming out next year. So yeah, um, so I got it for you know eighty quid, which is a bit a bit steep, but it's a decent price, but. It's a centenary bot, you know, it's my bot 900, and I like Sunstreaker, I mean, I was a kind of a, like a little closet fan of the character from the Marvel G1 comics, even though he didn't actually do a lot in the Marvel G1 comics, He's, he basically got injured early on and spent most of his time in Ratchet's repair bay, and 
And uh, yeah, but I, I loved his car mode. I loved the fact he had these like these big chrome air scoops on the back of his uh, Lamborghini mode. And uh, I never had the G1 toy, but I have got the G1 toy now, and it's really good. So yeah, uh, masterpiece Sunstreaker picked him up at uh, TF Nation. He's uh, my ninth centenary bot, so he's got that going for him as well. And he's a really awesome figure. I've transformed it a bunch of times. He's really fun to play with, and I love him. He's, he's fantastic, and he was my top bot purchase of uh, August. Then on to September, and in September I went to one of the NEC toy fairs. Now I've been to all four NEC toy fairs this year, and uh, September being the third one, and uh, I, I bought a few things at the convention as I usually, usually do. Um, you know, I usually take about £100 and usually meet up my friend Richard and go wandering round. And uh, I, I picked up a few decent bits from um, NEC Toy Fair in uh, September. And I came to this one stall where this guy had this this grey transformer on the desk. And I, it caught my eye and I went and had a quick look at it. And then I figured out what it was. And then I looked on the floor and he had a boxed original one of the same price. And the boxed one he had on the floor was the uh, Age of Extinction Leader Class Grimlock. New in boxed for 40 quid. And the figure he had on the bench was this guy. Age of Extinction Leader Class Prototype Grimlock. And it's still got, still got the price label on it. See? So yeah, he had this. Um, same price as the, uh, the boxed one on the floor. But I was looking at it and, and thinking, you know, actually, you know, I could go for that because, one, it's a prototype. And I had seen these things floating around on eBay back in the day, um, these unpainted prototypes. Um, I don't know why they were released, you know, for, for public purchase. It happened anyway. Some of them got released into the wild. And uh, I haven't got this mould, so I thought, you know, I want to get a version of the mould. And then I, I saw this one and I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go for it. So I bought it. And it's it's really good, but... You look at the dinosaur mode, you can see why I didn't go for it, because it's got this long, thin, distended neck, and then you've got you've got like the robot hands, our heel spurs on the dino mode, it doesn't stand up very well. Uh, the robot mode looks really good, the, the dino mode is not so great, but I bought it because it's uh, a prototype, and when I went through, it was one of those months where it was a bit, I couldn't make my mind up what was the best bot was that I bought that particular month. There was, there was quite a few bots that you know, could easily have been the top bot. But uh, eventually I went for this guy just because of what he is, because he is this prototype figure that I managed to pick up. And uh, yeah, so that was my, my, uh, my best purchase of uh, September, um, Age of Extinction, prototype leader class Grimlock. Now in October, a long overdue pre-order from Amazon arrives, and it's this guy. Power of the Prime's Evolution Nemesis Prime. Now this went up on pre-order on Amazon back in May for a, 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 a ridiculously cheap, you know, sort of um, pre-order price. I think they did it deliberately as like to test the water to see what sort of interest the figure would get, and it was like a, you know, like a. Uh, an early bird sort of you know, really in, uh, pre-order incentive price they put it down for. And it was about just over 40 quid. Um, I, I put a pre-order in for it. But then nothing. Then absolutely nothing. Nothing was heard. Um, I kept getting emails from Amazon every every six weeks or so saying, I'm sorry, we can't get this item for you. Would you like to cancel and all this, all this rubbish? Uh, but no, I, I held in there, which was difficult when I went to TF Nation because... Um, Kapow had a few of these on their store for 55 quid and I was tempted to go for it because it didn't seem like my Amazon pre-order was going to get honoured. Uh, but so, so I, I kept I kept, kept going and then eventually in October I got notification from Amazon, your item has been shipped and uh, it arrived shortly afterwards. And you know, I'm, I'm amazed by it. I mean, I wanted to go for the Optimus version, but again, because it's Optimus Prime... Um, I didn't want to go for it, even though I did want to get the leader class Evolution Optimus. But then they said they were doing this Nemesis version. Of course, he comes with all these extra guns and swords and things and uh, is, is amazing. So uh, I went for that and 
when I got this, I went onto Amazon and they were they were offering it on Amazon for an even cheaper price. I think it was like thirty seven pound twenty or something like that. They were doing it for, but of course you can't. I don't think you can get it for that now. But anyway, yeah. So he arrived in October. I got it for a really what I think is a really good pl price. It's it's an amazing figure. The all over black color scheme just works so much better with this mold because on the Optimus version because it's got. The, the body is mostly made out of the trailer sections. There's a lot of folded up grey panels on his arms and his legs, which look a bit out of place. But because this one's all over black, it just it just just you know much more cohesive colours all over, both in truck and uh, robot mode. And he's he's a, he's a fantastic figure, and he was my favourite thing that I got in October. Then in November, I found this guy in the wild. Yep, my fir the first one I found in the wild, um, Power of the Primes, Voyager Class, Wave 2, Hungar. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> as you know, with the d disappearance of uh, Toys R Us in the UK, it, it caused the whole toy dr distribution network in the UK to go into chaos. Um, and as a result of which, toys that we should have got earlier in the year were weren't sent out or they weren't distributed to the other you know toy retailers in the UK like Smith's Entertainer and the supermarkets um so we didn't get stuff like we should have done had Toys R Us still been in play then yeah I'm sure we would have got stuff when we were meant to so we didn't we should have got this guy I think about sort of like mid-year sort of like June July time we didn't get him he didn't hit the shops until November so <laughs> But uh, that being said, I mean, there was a few of these at TF Nation being sold by various sellers for a uh, uh, slightly uh, scalper-like 35 quid. Um, so I didn't buy one then, even though I could have done. And of course, you could, could have bought one online, but the scalper price online, 35, 40, 45 quid. I wanted to buy one at the recommended retail price in the UK at Smith's, which is 23.99, And that's what I did uh, when I was up at Bury on one of my trips up to Bury. I went over to Smith's and there he was on the shelf and I just bought him. So yeah, and this guy, when I first saw the um, the pre, you know the the the, the Hasbro you know, pre reveal pictures of it, it, it just looked a bit odd because it had these these big lumps on here because the combiner ports are built into his knees and he's got these big thick chunky forearms and then in dragon mode, um, obviously you get those lump the big lumps on the uh, the necks of the uh, the double headed dragon and he's got such a size disparity between the front and the rear legs. It just looked really odd, you know, the proportions weren't quite right. But it wasn't until I actually got the guy in, in hand and, and played with him, he, he's actually really good. You know, he's a really good figure in himself. Yes, he has a few aesthetic sort of issues that make him look a bit, you know, oddly proportioned. But you, when you're in, 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 you know, in person, they don't look so bad in, in the plastic. And uh, when you turn him into his combiner mode, he, he's super solid. And I haven't actually combined him yet, but I will do at some point and uh, he's he's a brilliant figure and I, and I got him for a, a really good price even though if I'd have waited until December I could have got him for £19.20 from <laughs> from Entertainer but there you go so yeah Power of the Primes Voyager Class Hunger right now on to December and the final month of the year and in December I uh, found out about another Megatron Gunformer that I'd not seen before thanks to uh, Ben of Ben's Collectibles because he uh, he showed it on one of his videos in the background and then later on he reviewed it and it made me want to search it out and uh, I the only place I could find it for sale was on uh, AliExpress so uh, I took out an, an AliExpress account and uh, I ordered it on the 1st of December and it arrived 12 days later and I'm really 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 love this thing this is the MBK, I think it's called Small Gun, but it's their um, their rendition of that gun form that Megatron turns into in the final episode of the um, the uh, Transformers Machinima series, Combiner Wars, where he momentarily turns into like this like Cybertronian rifle, and Optimus grabs it and then shoots, you know, like Starscream when he absorbs the, the combination thing and uh, starts going wild. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stop putting this. I can't put this thing down. I've been messing around with it ever since I got it. Um, from MBK, a company that's known for making like third-party knockoffs, you know, like that uh, oversized. Well, a slightly was it slightly oversized? Um, a generation toy gravity builder. 
Uh, this this figure is designed to work with that, and apparently it was a, a an exclusive figure, like a chaser figure that was only available to those people who pre-ordered the full set, and then they got sent this as a, like a Brucey bonus. But uh, yeah, it's not you can't get it on eBay from what I can see. I've not seen it available on eBay, and I don't know how long this thing's been out. But yeah, MBK uh, they they did it. Um, I love messing around with this thing. It's it's really really cool, and it is the best bot in my opinion, my most favourite bot that I got in December. Now we move on to the extra six or the uh, the uh, the other six figures that make up the uh, the 18 bots. Now these were obviously other bots that I bought throughout the year, which may or may not, or they could have been the, the top bot of the month had it not been for the other one which you've just seen. So we go back to April and I managed to get finally get hold of one of these guys. This is the Takara uh, Adventure AD32 Stinger, which is their um, Age of Extinction uh, repaint of the, uh, the 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 concept Camaro Bumblebee mold up as Stinger, which was that uh, KSI uh, bot, which was Bumblebee's sort of nemesis in the Age of Extinction movie. He transformed from a Pagani Weira into a bot that looks virtually identical to Bumblebee. Um, and we didn't actually get uh, an official Stinger in the West. Well, I mean, you got that um, that one-step Stinger that did transform into a Pagani, but it wasn't a uh, fully articulated deluxe. Uh, so it was only Takara that actually did this. And it was an official, it was a, an exclusive Takara release. It never got uh, a worldwide distribution. And as a result, this guy's scalper bait, big style. I mean, you try finding one of these on eBay, you'll be lucky to get one for about 60, 70, 80 quid. And I wasn't prepared to pay that price. So I kept looking. There are KOs of this in like normal size and oversized that have got a lot more paint on that you can get for about 20, 25 quid. But I wasn't going to prepare to, to, to go that route. I wanted to get an official one. And my faith was rewarded back in uh, April when one popped up on eBay at a halfway decent price. So I went for it. And when it arrived, I was seriously impressed with this mould. I thought it was really, really good. And and I've, I've got quite a lot of the uh, Bumblebee Deluxe moulds. But this one... Um, it just it just works so well. I mean, it's got a few issues, but it hasn't got that stupid automorph on the legs, for instance, that a lot of the Bumblebee Deluxe molds from the movies have got. It's it's a really cool mold. It's 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 nice and solid. Um, there's no wear degradation on it. Um, it looks great. Uh, fun transformation, and uh, I, I was really impressed with it. And the fact of what it is, because it's the Stinger repaint, and it's you know it's a it's a, a rare, exclusive, you know, expensive. Um, Takara version, then I was all the happier to have it, and uh, yeah, so this guy you know, qualifies as the first of the uh, extra six bots to go on my TF18 list, so that's, uh, yeah, Takara AD32 Stinger. Now in May, um, I got a couple of uh, bots that uh, were pretty damn good and were worthy of going uh, as, as part of the extra six, and one of them is uh, this guy. Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Cyberverse Commander Ultra Magnus. Now, you think, um, you know, that AD32 you know, Takara Stinger was uh, scalper bait. You haven't seen this guy. Now, this guy, for, for whatever reason, he is scalper candy. Um, you try getting hold of one of these for under, like, you know, 30, 40 quid. Good luck with that. Um... When I did my end of month bot haul and I showed this up, I, I did a, this, this, uh, these two screenshots of these two eBay sellers that had them on eBay at the moment. One was doing it for like uh, 45 quid plus postage and another one was doing it for 100 quid plus postage. It's a Legion class figure, guys. You know, <laughs> but I mean, I, I wanted one of these because it's Ultra Magnus. I mean, it's got these, it's a rework of the Optimus Prime, you know, the Cyberverse Commander uh, mold with a few sort of tweaks. It's got these shoulder pieces, new head sculpts, and this amazing paint job. Um, looks amazing. That the colours just just pop on this guy. It's Ultra Magnus, one of my favourite characters, so I had to have it. And I've been searching for one of these guys for a while, but again, because of the stupid scalper prices it goes for, I just couldn't get one at a halfway decent price. And then eventually, one popped up on Amazon for about just over twenty quid, and I was I was happy enough to pay that. Which is still a lot of money for a Legion class, but. When you look at what the options are, you know, you got to go for it. And, uh, yeah, I got him. And it's it's a really cool mould. I mean, these Cyberverse Commander you know, moulds are, you know, they're, they're more than the regular 
sort of a legion class mode they they have a you know they have knees they have hips elbows and, and such you know they're, they're they're a little bit more articulation they have a, a decent molding detail and really cool intricate transformations so that they're, they're fantastic little figures and ultra magnus beast hunters ultra magnus is no exception i mean i've got the other um cyberverse ultra magnus mold in here so now i've got both of them uh yeah he's a fantastic little figure and he was um my sort of uh extra bot uh, another extra bot that i uh, got in may but as you know may was a was a really blockbusting month for me because i had one of my best hauls ever throughout the year in may i, I got so much stuff in may and I, I came in under budget so that was great but one of the reasons I, I did so well was that um, I actually did a bit, a bit of car booting. Um, I, I went to uh, to uh, the local CJ car boot at the uh, Leamington Rugby Club, which is their opening um, their opening uh, show on the, the beginning of May, and it was absolutely packed. And I picked up a couple of bits there. But then I think a week or so later, I went up to Stoneley, which was the other local one. And while walking around Stony, it wasn't quite as busy as uh, CJ's had been, but I went into one of the halls, and as I was walking around, I found this chap who had this table full of Transformers, and uh, he looked up at me and says, Oh, I know you from YouTube, and it's like it's the first time ever I've been called out in public. Someone's recognised me from YouTube, and the guy's name is Max, so hello, Max, if you're watching. And uh, he had a table full of, like, Power Rangers and... Uh, uh, Transformer toys, mostly movie and uh, sort of uh, animated figures, and I went around and I picked up um, uh, five deluxe figures that he sold me for a you know, really good price, three pound each. And one of the figures I got off him is this guy. This is Movie Deluxe Salvage from the original movie. It's a deluxe class figure. Um, I kind of knew this thing existed because I'd previously bought one uh, at an NEC toy fair a couple of years previous, but it was was missing a few parts, so I didn't bother. But this one's complete, and he's really, really cool. He's really grown on me a lot. Um, he transforms into this big red, you know, sort of butch, mod, you know, modern, uh, you know, like a custom pickup truck type thing. And uh, it looks really, really cool, very, very detailed. And then you get this robot out of it. And the transformation's really interesting. It's, it's quite intricate. It's got a little bit of um, sort of automorph with the, uh, the doors and the wings as they fold up. Um, Really cool aesthetic, decently articulated, and he's got this this big sort of weapon with these these big sort of claws. He's brilliant. I love the guy. He's he's a fantastic figure, and um, I wanted to put him on my TF18 list mainly so I could give Max a shout out for selling it to me and and recognising me. So uh, hello again, Max. Thanks thanks a lot, buddy, for for uh, sorting me out with this guy. I I, I never probably would have got him otherwise. And uh, he's a really awesome deluxe figure, and uh, I got him in May as well. And uh, he was one of the, in my opinion, one of the best bots I uh, I picked up on that month and this year. So that's why it's on this list. So yeah, movie deluxe salvage, go figure. Going back on what I said earlier about you know Toys R Us shutting down and toy distribution in the UK being you know a bit chaotic. Um, you know we didn't get. The, the the power of the prime figures when we were supposed to and it wasn't until june that we actually got the wave one figures so uh, back in june i was i uh, can't remember whether i got it up at boreal wherever it was i got it from so i picked up the, the first couple of figures from wave one and i wanted to get the dinobots and i wanted to get the the terracons and the first terracon that came available was ripper snapper and wow <laughs> uh, i got to admit this guy really floats my boat um not that I care much for the, the Terracons per se, because when I read the, read the Marvel G1 comics, they literally appeared as I stopped getting the comic. Issue 199 was the, the precursor to the Time Wars storyline, and that was when the Terracons first appeared in the Marvel G1 comic, and that was the last issue that I got before I stopped getting the comic, so I didn't really have much to do with the characters after that. Um, yeah, but I'm seriously impressed with this guy, and it's mainly because of the paint. I mean... You look how much colour is on this guy. I mean, just just look at him. I mean, he's got he's got red, he's got yellow, he's got silver, he's got uh, he's got two tone blue, he's got this this pale white. You know, he's got so much paint and colours going on, and he's a decent little mould. I mean, he's got quite a clever transformation. I mean, yeah, these guys are are kind of rework. They say they're supposedly reworks of the um, the Dinobot moulds, 
but they, they work so well and, and articulation and, and everything going on with this guy he's he's a fantastic little figure and he's by far my favorite uh power of the prime deluxe figure he's awesome he's amazing and I, I love the guy he's fantastic he just just pops with those colors and he's you know he's, he's not too loose um he's you know really poseable looks great transforms fun and fantastic and i love the guy and hence why he's in the extra six so yeah so i got him in june power of the primes deluxe class ripper snapper now, as you know, I like to collect these Korean things, and I've, I, you know, it's the staple of my channel. I, I buy usually two Korean bots a month, and I, I you know, always review them as part of you know, how my channel works. But this year, um, it's been a bit hit and miss with KTRTs. A lot of the KTRTs I've got have been not very good. You know, a lot of them have been not first bots. They've been the worst bots that I've got every month. You know, because they they disappointed me so much. But then things have started to pick up on the KTRT toy lines towards the end of the year. New toy lines have been introduced. Um, new toy lines have been sort of rebooted, and there's, there's new figures coming out, and it, it's it's looking it's looking good again. And there's there's new stuff coming out all the time. I mean, there's, there's some new reveals just before Christmas that, that have, you know got me you know, you know slavering at the mouth. But um, yeah, so uh, a new toy line that was introduced in the the you know, sort of last, the second half of this year is the um, Hello Carbots Cretaceous Period Dino Bots. Because um, Hello Carbots, they did a movie last year and they released four you know, Dino Bot figures as part of that toy line. And the first one that I got in September is this gal, because it's a Fembot and it's Terrajet. Now, I went for Terrajet first simply because of these gaudy colours that she comes in. I mean, she's got this orange and this lime green and the purple uh, and she's just eye-watering to look at i mean I'm, why did they go for such a such an outlandish color scheme on this guy i mean she transforms into a pterosaur um she's also uh, you know engineering wise she whereas the other dinosaurs are shell formers and they hide all their robot bits this gal she transforms like a plane form you know she's like a dinosaur on top and a folded up robot underneath but but i love her and the build quality on her is great the articulation is great the colors are fantastic and she just looks so amazing in these colors and I, and, I, and I really really like her and i think she is probably the best korean bot that i've got this year i was uh, very very impressed with this gal with the uh, hello car bots cretaceous period terra jet <laughs> she's awesome so yeah uh, she's on the extra six so now for the final bot of my TF18 of 2018, or the the final extra six bot, and I, I had a bit of a, a bit of soul searching to try and sort this one out. I mean, it, this guy, uh, when you look at the uh, honourable mentions, this guy could have it could have been any one of those. This guy and the honourable mentions, it, it was so so close, and I'd I, I put it down to, you know, sort of the character, engineering, the the, the design, you know transformation and all those factors and i decided that i would put this guy in at my final tf18 uh, 2018 place on my final extra six spot it is magic square um transporter um msb04 transporter he is awesome this guy is awesome a little legend scale g1 style ultra magnus Engineering on this guy is absolutely fantastic. I love the way it transforms. It's the 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 articulation is awesome. Um, he looks fantastic. Um, he does have these unusual aesthetic. He's, he's very sort of thin and lanky because um, you know you compare him with Masterpiece Ultra Magnus, who's who's got that that big butch chunky body form that we're we're used to with G1 Ultra Magnus, and this guy looks like a, a skinny runt as a result. Um, that's the only um, gripe I've got for this figure. Apart from that, he's a lot of fun to transform. Really cool transformation scheme, um, and the, the 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 plastic quality, the build quality, the design, the engineering, you know, the joints, everything. It's a fantastic little figure. It's the second toy that I've got from Magic Square. I, I got uh, Magic Square Fire Extinguisher, who you'll see in a bit because he's on my honourable mentions. Um, got him at TF Nation. I was really blown away by him. But this guy, 
It's Ultra Magnus, baby. It's one of my favourite characters and one of three Ultra Magnuses you've seen on this list. So that just tells you something, doesn't it? So yeah, so that's the, the final bot on my TF18 of 2018 and my final uh, extra six bot. Magic Square, Transporter, a.k.a. Legends Ultra Magnus. So that's all my... You know, TF18 to 2018 bots. You, you've seen them all now. You've seen my, my list of the top bots I picked up this year. But I do have a couple of honourable mentions, which I will go into now. Yeah, so uh, back in January, uh, I got one of my first KTRTs. And I wanted to get this guy last year, in December last year. But I had to, you know, bring him over into January of this year. And it is um, Geomecha Captain Dino 04 Brachio Cannon. And... This guy is massive. He's he's really really big. Um, he has he's a triple changer. He has three modes. He has a shape. He turns into this like oblong sort of oval thing. Um, he's got a, a, a brachiosaur you know, dino bot mode, and he's got this robot mode. Little bit of parts forming involved in transforming him from one mode to the other. Um, not as bad as some of the other figures in the uh, the the Captain Dino line, but this guy. He's a uh, really really cool. I love his robot mode. He's reasonably articulated, but he, he looks super super cool. He's really big. Um, build quality is not quite as good as some other KTRTs because I mean some of the the plastic quality they've used on this it looks a bit suspect. You know, it looks a bit soft and uh, squidgy uh, compared to the plastics of um, of old that I know that that young toys have used on their you know toe bots and uh, and uh, other figures. But yeah, um, got this guy in January. Very impressed with him. He's he's one of the best uh, KTRT bots I've ever picked up this year. So that was uh, Brachio Cannon. Then in August, I got Leo Khan uh, again. Geo Mecha, but this is a Geo Mecha Beast Guardian. This is the the first series. Brachio Cannon is from the second series of Geo Mecha. This guy is from the f for first series, and he uh, transforms into a robotic lion. And he also has like a like a shape mode, which is that size, that sort of shape. Um, very successful in getting into the shape mode. Some of the other uh, Geo Mecha figures that I've got, they sort of squeeze into the shape mode, but they have bits of the robot sort of sticking out the sides. This guy really does fit into the compact little oblong box that he forms. Um, he's decently articulated, he's got fun transformation, really nice colours. Very impressed with him, um, he's very cool. Um, I'm probably going to pick up a few more figures from the Geomecha line. I'm tempted to get the Combiner from Season 2, the uh, the, the Captain Dino Combiner. Um, tempted to get that, it's it's kind of expensive but it is. it has got four modes and it's, it's, a, it's a horrendous parts former and all that stuff but yeah. I'm tempted to get that, and I might get some of the other. I might get um, you know, um, Tyranno Tooth and uh, Stego Tank, but uh, yeah. So I've got Leo Khan. He's a pretty cool figure, and one of the again one of the the better KTRTs that I got this year. And then, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the, on the my last. Um, Extra six bot or, or T the, the the bot eighteen on my TF eighteen list, Magic Square Transporter at TF Nation. I got hold of uh, Fire Extinguisher, which is the first Magic Square figure I got hold of. I, I I really like these these figures. I mean, Magic Square doing some really really good stuff, um, bringing out these legend scale G one figures. This guy, I mean, I'm a bit of a fan, a closet fan of Inferno, G1 Inferno, Inferno for, for something that he did in the Marvel G1 comics. Uh, yeah, so uh, got hold of him. Amazing little figure, fantastic transformation, amazing um, articulation, great build quality. Love this thing. It's an absolutely fantastic little figure and definitely, you know, worth an honourable mention if nothing else. So uh, that's that. Now on to my final honourable mention, and I'm now filming this on December 31st, whereas the uh, the other majority, the rest of the video was uh, recorded on uh, Saturday the 29th because of the reason because of this bot because it got delivered at the last minute. Um, I would have put it on my TF18 list, but it didn't quite float my boat. You know, it's still a, a brilliant figure, and it's definitely worth. 
an honourable mention. I am, of course, referring to Mastermind Creations reformatted R34 Cylindrus. Their uh, IDW roller homage. Um, yeah, uh, I got notification on, was it Friday the 28th, that Kapow was shipping this. I pre-ordered this back in October. And I've been tracking it on the uh, the Royal Mail app, and it's been like moving from Peterborough to Northampton to, to Leamington, and it, it finally got delivered this morning at about half past ten, and I'm filming this at like half past eleven. Um, I've had a quick go with it. it it's very good. Um, it's the cool tour mold. The cool tour mold's really brilliant. Um, you know the joints are all tight. The transformations, you know, f fun and easy. Um, Compared to the the box art, um, they've they've changed a few colours on the mould slightly, and I think it doesn't quite work as well uh, as the uh, you know the illustrations on the box. But that's just a, a minor nitpick. Um, it's it's a brilliant figure, and he's big, he's chunky, he's really good. But didn't quite make it onto my TF eighteen a twenty eighteen list. But he he's that's the reason. I mean, the reason why I've held out doing these videos, I would have done them sooner, is because of this dude. You know, I wish Kapow would just held held off on delivering it until the new year. Then it would have been the first bot I got in 2019, and it it would have been I would have enjoyed it probably a bit more because of that. But it's still a great bot and definitely worth uh, an honourable mention because uh, it, it's a really great figure. So that is my final honourable mention for my uh, TF18 of 2018 video. So that's it. You've seen everything, all the bots that I. Uh, all the favourite bots that I got this year. Of course, um, the way I do my TF18, my, my, my top bots of the year, I don't do them in order of preference. I do them in order of, you know, uh, an order of purchase. And um, they're not all bots that were released in this year. And they're, you know, there's a combination of bots from the third party, Korean and official here. So they're all over the shop. It's just out of all the bots I bought this year, these are by far the bots that I liked the most out of everything that I got this year. And I, I, I bought about 160 odd bots <laughs> this year. So you can understand that, you know, I had a lot of stuff to choose from. And these are, the you know, the cream of the crop. So with that said, this has been my TF18 to 2018 video. I don't know whether I'll do the TF19 next year. I might just, as I do this uh, first and worst for my end of month bot hauls, I will probably just do like a top 12 next year. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But that's been my uh, my uh, top bots of the year. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've been TFR Wilderness. Uh, my end of month bot haul video will be coming on later today. I've got to sit down and film this directly after I finish editing this video. So uh, that will be coming next. And uh, yeah, so yeah. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I've been TFR Wilderness. I bid you adieu.